Hello, and welcome to my 2023 recap. For this video, I wanted to take a look back on everything I made this year, so I hope you enjoy taking a little trip back in time with me. All the way back in January was this Irish cob and my first Sabino paint job. I can't believe it's only been a year. I feel like I've made so much since him. This is still one of my favorite molds, and I have another one to paint in the future, so definitely let me know what color you think you would look good in. I remember it taking forever to build up the white legs, and honestly, I could have done a few more layers. At this point, I hadn't started using pastels yet, and I think the shading in the tail would have really benefited from that. I also hadn't started using colored pencils for the herring yet, and that would have really taken those details to another level. I still think he is pretty, though. Next up is Miss Sodashi. It's definitely been tricky trying to keep an all-white horse dust-free. She's the first horse I shaded with eyeshadow, which isn't super common, so I'm curious to see if anything changes in the future, but so far she's looking good. I think she has the best hooves I've ever done. I don't know what it was about them, but ever since I've never achieved that nice of a hoof detail. I guess because she's just white, I went all in with the little details. I believe the real soda she is now retired, so it will be cool to see if she has a foal. I will definitely want to make her a mini one if that happens. Her tack is still holding up nicely. A little annoying to put on it shows, but not too bad with the help of some tiny pliers. The throat latch could have been slightly longer. Next up is Oraz, my sooty buckskin. I still think he's one of my favorites even if he is such a shelf hog. He was my first go at making dapples, so considering that I think he's really nice. I still struggle with dapples even though I love how they look. There are just so many ways to go about doing them, I need to find what works for me. I would love to do more on this mold in the future. It's so dynamic and one of my favorite tail sculpts. After that, I felt confident enough to paint my first resin. They're so expensive, I really didn't want to mess anything up. Of course, I couldn't help myself and made another Sabino. This time I used colored pencils as well, and it was definitely the way to go. He also stands so much better with the new tail, and I don't have to worry about him tipping over at all. I know I briefly mentioned it in his video, but oh my gosh, he was so stinky. Like he really smelled like feet. I have no idea what would have caused that. I made sure to run it underwater and feel for damp spots to make sure the resin was okay, and it seemed fine. <laughs> this video always really cracks me up, because Miss Pecan was so interested in the smell. I guess she's just a stinky girl that loves stinky things. But I'm happy to report after all the baking soda and the paint, he hasn't smelled since. For my tack only video, I did a shrimp fishing harness. I still think it would be cool to make a rider in a big yellow coat for him, but I really dread sewing. I did end up printing out some shrimp to stick in the baskets. I found out about this tradition through researching horses in other cultures which is an endlessly fascinating subject, and I definitely recommend looking into it. Now we're getting into some re-sculpting, which is always scary at first. I love the Frisian mold, but I think the head being lower really elevates him and makes him really fancy. And of course I love sculpting hair, so the more the merrier. If I had to change anything, I'd say maybe the hooves could have been a little bit better. For some reason, black hooves seem to be harder for me than tan possibly because there's less colors to work with. He was also my first time using some Tester's Spray Lucker, and he did take months to stop being slightly tacky, but it gave him such a nice finish. Here's a little behind the scenes. I'd actually done the airbrushing and dremeling all in one night because I have to do that stuff in my parents' garage. I try and make the trips count. My videos might make it seem that I do things one at a time, but I find working on two or three at a time is good so you can let things dry and not get too stuck on something. It also helps to take a step back from one so you have fresh eyes when you go back to it. Another plus is when the weather won't cooperate and you can't work on anything that needs to be sealed, you still have something else to do. I don't do any more than that though or I'll get overwhelmed. Speaking of things that are good to work on when the weather isn't behaving, more tack. Also inspired by my research of horses and other cultures is this Indian Marwari regalia. This one's interesting because of how divisive it seems to be in the show ring. Some judges love it and some really don't. It's always interesting to see how it will do, but either way, I think it's cool. I had one tassel fall off, which was an easy fix, but otherwise it's behaved. I want to do more fancy outfits like this in the future. 
Now onto my favorite mold, the Saddlebred. Surprisingly though, if I had to pick a least favorite from this year, it would be him. I think he's nice, but he's just not what I'd hoped. I fully blame my pastel for being too yellow. It's not as yellow in person as it is on camera here, but it's still too much. It being my favorite mold, I just feel like I could have done it more justice. I will absolutely be doing another one at some point. That being said, I still like how the white pattern and the tail shading came out. So you lose some, but then sometimes you win some right after. I didn't expect him to take off like that, and I'm so happy that people enjoyed him as much as I do. I was so discouraged when I'd gotten that model because it was so rough for how expensive it was. Initially, I'd planned to use the Kelpie idea for a different horse, but then I had them all sitting around a while and that just hit me one night while I was falling asleep that he would be perfect for that. So I jumped out of bed and held the skull up to it and I was like, yeah, that, <laughs> that's gonna be it. Then, after I'd edited most of the video, my computer decided that it didn't like working anymore, and I almost lost all the footage too. This was also in the middle of me moving to a new place, but luckily I was able to get a new computer and re-edit everything. So it was an absolute roller coaster. Also the night I was drumming the ribs in the garage, a random possum showed up and scared the crap out of me, but he was chill. Look at that little face. This really gave me incentive to make more fantasy models. I absolutely love them, but live shows really focus on realism. Like, fantasy will usually get lumped all into one class, or sometimes doesn't even have a class at all. But I am more than happy to make more fantasy customs if you guys like them. Even though I love the Kelpie, if you had to ask me to pick a favorite from this year, surprisingly he wouldn't be it. Instead, it has to be this guy. He's my first attempt at doing leopard spotting, but I'm hooked. I really like the pastel technique for spots. It gives them a softness. He's just so flashy and an absolute unit of a model. He also won me an overall champion in resins at a live show, which is just crazy, I still can't believe that happened. Now last but not least is my drastic smarty custom. This cow did not want to make it easy, but you can't be mad at her. This is my first time doing some hair by hair roaning, and I think it's a cool effect. I think she looks great in a western saddle, which in case you didn't guess, will be in an upcoming video. I think eventually a mounted shooting scene would be cool to make with her. I keep meaning to make riders and putting it off because I do not like sewing in hair. I didn't talk about it in the video, but I 3D printed this cute little barrel with a PLA printer. Then I painted it to look weathered, with the reds washed out like they've been faded by the sun. I used a watered down reddish brown acrylic for the rust. It reminds me of the old ones we would play around with at the barn I rode at. I didn't make a video for this little guy, but I think he turned out pretty nice. He was a gift for someone who really likes Peruvian Passos. I did an acrylic base and shaded him with pastels. As a little extra, I thought it'd be fun to share some of my favorite horses I bought this year. First up is this Nakoda named Shelby. He was the gambler's choice for the Briar Collector Club this year, and I got the Grillo Appaloosa, which was the one I was most hoping for out of the three. Next, you may have seen her in my Briarfest video, but it's FEA's Grand Design. Of course, I had to put a Sabino, and the Othello mode is just so beautiful. I just might have to do a custom in the future. Next is another Briarfest horse, to no surprise, a Hamilton. Of the set, this guy was my favorite, and I'm forever grateful to the person that traded him to me. I like gray coats as much as Sabinos, but they're so challenging for me. Stay tuned for that, though. Next is a Premier Club horse. Adonis? Is that his name? I kind of forget. Well, anyway, he's pretty. This was my first year in the club, and I definitely picked a good one. Any rearing pose is going to be good, but I think they really knocked it out of the park with this beautiful spotted pattern. And lastly, another premiere model. Rhiannon the Vanner. Can I have this paint job on every model, please? And that mane, it's so silky and smooth. Another exciting thing happened this year. I mentioned moving earlier, but this was my old setup. Basically, two tables and a chair in the corner of my bedroom. So if nothing else, it proves you can do this hobby with limited space. But I was fortunate to move to a place where I could have my own little studio, which I'm so excited for. You can see a little sneak peek of some future projects there. So stay tuned for all of those and the ones I've teased in this video. But yeah, that about does it. Thank you all for sticking around and hanging out with me. And thank you all so much for the overwhelmingly nice comments. 
and of course for booping that like button and subscribing for more projects. I can't wait to see what I come up with for the next year. Thank you for watching!